Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. On today's show, we have fun in the salt water, fishing for various species of rockfish off the west coast of Vancouver Island. We'll discuss equipment, flies, and how to find these hard fighting fish. It's going to be a great show, so stay with us. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis, Ontario, yours to discover, Islander Precision Fly Reels. Today the new Fly Fisher crew travels to the west coast of beautiful Vancouver Island to the town of Tofino, home to about 1,400 residents. Tofino, BC is the most popular destination on the west coast of Vancouver Island. Visitors come to experience whale watching, kayaking, and some of the best saltwater fly fishing anywhere. Joining me today is Jay Mole, owner of Jay's Claquat Ventures. Jay's intimate knowledge of the area will be paramount in our success, and he's promised me a day of non-stop action. Like a ton, didn't he? Sure, man. I thought it was a lot bigger than that. So, Brian, one of the main reasons that I picked uh, an area like this, we're just on the very outer edge of Clackwood Sound. Right. Uh, the tide is ebbing out right now. It's just started to ebb. And uh, got one of the very first kelp beds that uh, is on the outer edge of the sound. Obviously these kelp beds provide safe haven for these rockfish and uh, there are other predator species, mainly larger lingcod that uh, would try and uh, find these guys, search them out, consume them. But uh, also, like the coho salmon, they prefer these kelp beds because the uh, smaller needlefish, uh, little herring, uh, smaller perch will use these kelp beds as uh, safe haven and uh, the rockfish will feed on those species, so right. it's uh, provides pretty good uh, all-around ecosystem for us to play with, present our flies, and uh, the nice thing about these multi-species um, fisheries like this is you don't know if you're going to hook a certain type of rockfish. Could be a cabazon that's going to bulldog down in the bottom in seconds, or it could be a large uh, lingcod that you've really got to watch your tippet because uh, <laughs> your shark could. teeth can shear it in a second. You could hook a Chinook out here. At the you right could hook a coho salmon, a Chinook salmon. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, pretty diverse opportunity in an area like this. Hey 
you got there, Jay? I don't know, but uh, it was second cast on this reef. We just pulled up to this uh, one outside spot here, so it's usually been a pretty good spot for us and uh, hoping that there's some larger lings lurking around here. I think this uh, feels like a rockfish. So just a bit of kelp here just to mark the reef and... Yeah, it's nice. You know, this time of the year we've we've uh, pretty well always got the kelp that will help mark the reefs. Actually, Brian, I'm looking on the sonar and I see fish from 20 feet right down to the bottom right oh, now. Yep, speak of the devil. Go. You're you on. Them. <laughs> Good job. They're here. Oh, it's sure nice having a sounder. <laughs> See, he ate that fly right down. Oh, this is a nine weight and they're just pulling it. Got your nine weight bent right over? Oh, yeah. I'm already down here. Maybe I can help you get rid of that one. Right. I'll just direct them your way. If you find one, you'll find a school. Usually. And there yeah. was a big school on the screen when I mentioned that. Perfect. Yeah. See, these guys have got spikes yeah. all around their body on the gill plates, on their back, on their anal fin. And uh, when, you get, when it breaks your skin, you know it for a little while because it uh, leaves you a little bit of a sting. Oh yeah. yeah. That's nice big fish. <laughs> the little guy, this guy's not that small, but yeah, you that beat other him one. to it and you got a big one on Yeah, this one's decent. <laughs> So when you find the school... Yeah, when you find the school and oh, see them rolling yeah. along the kelp here? You could get them on poppers right now. Yeah, we could. That's... Yeah, that's good. Yeah. There. Beautiful fish. Yeah, when you hooked, when you hooked up, I just dropped my fly down. Those dumbbell eyes taking it down. Yeah. Yeah, I oh, changed. That's a nice fish. I changed uh, patterns to this big optic. Got down there, and they were just racing for it. <laughs> nice. The flies we used today included the Mr. Squid, a green and orange clouser minnow, and various deceivers. The recipe for today is for the Mr. Squid, designed by longtime fishing friend Malcolm Ruddick. The hook is a Mustad S71 SZ34007 in 3 aught and 4 aught. The thread is white 6 aught. The tail includes 8 to 10 blue dun saddle feathers with barring if possible mixed with 8 to 10 strands of pearl crystal flash and 4 to 6 strands of clear with silver glitter silly legs. The collar includes white marabou on the bottom and gray on the top. For the eyes, we're using large fly eyes or fly eyes plus, yellow or silver with black pupils. The body is large pearl crystal chenille. For fishing really deep depths, add a large or extra large tungsten cone in black, silver or gold. Glow in the dark flash and silly lake materials can also be added into the tail. There he is. Double, double. double. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. 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 You got something different there? Oh, I lost him. That guy pulled. Uh, look at like another one. Look at that. I got another one on the way back up. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, one looked... that felt bigger, that one. That... Yeah. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Actually, after you saw that ling, I'm, wor I'm wondering about putting my hands in the water with these guys. <laughs> well, considering that ling's head broke the surface chasing it, I know. there's a lot of teeth coming at you. <laughs> yeah. Nice fish. Tofino is located in Clayquot Sound on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. 
Clayquot Sound includes extensive ancient coastal temperate rainforests, rivers, lakes, marine ecosystems, and beaches. It also includes part of the Pacific Rim National Park Reserve, Strathcona Provincial Park, and several other protected areas. Jay, what do you got there? This thing hammered you. I don't know, but it hammered, went right back to the bottom and uh, peeled a bunch of line. If it is a rockfish, it's definitely, definitely pulled hard. Yeah, oh, it is so, one. but it's it's a big one. You know, wow, did the he... fishing we've had today has been actually spectacular. It's just one of so many things to do when you're in Tofino. And it, well, you know, the diversity of fish species out here. Tofino is well known for its uh, Chinook salmon fishing, its halibut, its coho fishing, its coho fly fishing. But what we're doing today is, uh, you know, it's nonstop. Look at the Fortunately, weather. <laughs> we've got uh, the weather, open ocean treating us really well. There's so much to do for families in Tofino. Just, you know, you fishing know, certainly and then kayaking, absolutely. surfing, you know, the, hiking. The, a, big, a big factor is people can come to a, a beach a beachfront community like this. They can uh, put a tent up at a beachfront campground. They can stay in a five-star resort. There's a long distance release. <laughs> Oh, and uh, or they uh, they can stay in a fully contained vacation rental, which is actually quite popular for anglers, in that they can get up in the morning and uh, do their thing. create their breakfast, do their thing, pack a box lunch, and then come home. And if they choose to uh, have a fresh seafood dinner at their barbecue or go out to a great restaurant, you know those are those it's are all there. Great options. Yeah, great place for a vacation. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, uh, I've, I've fished all over the coast and uh, really happy that I called Tofino home and uh, I've been outfitting here for about 13 years now and uh, it's, that diversity has really made it good for us. The technique is uh, <laughs> really when you're when you're fishing around structure like this, the sonar is almost indispensable. Where oh, yeah. <laughs> 15 minutes ago we spent uh, well five minutes casting along uh, along a kelp area that wasn't holding fish yeah. and we weren't touching them, and I can see the school here on the sonar and oh, we're only in 35 covered. feet of water, but it is solid fish below us. So therefore. Uh, Laying it out with, uh, we're both fishing fairly heavy tips to get down quick, and um, it doesn't take too long. When there's that many fish, it hits the water, you're down about five feet. <laughs> yeah, beautiful fish. Healthy fish. When coming to Tofino, bring 9-foot stiff action rods in 8 or 9 weight. The heavier action rods are needed to force the fish away from the kelp beds and rocky bottoms. Large arbor reels with good drag systems are needed just in case you hook a large salmon, which is very likely when fishing this area. Yeah. Now, with this, uh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> with this fishery, <laughs> that's a strong fish. Um, you know, here we are, I've, I've been able to maneuver the boat very near the structure that's holding these fish. And uh, I've, we've just been playing around with, there's been enough fish that we've been able to play around with uh, patterns. And this pattern I've got on is a very heavy squid that uh, even a, an experienced caster is not going to be able to send this out very far. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive when you can have a three or four pound rockfish doubling over a, an eight weight like that. A very strong eight weight for that matter. Beautiful fish. Yeah. Here's a, 
Here's an example of the, uh, the small sea perch that they eat. See that, Brian? Oh yeah, he's got a pile perch. In yeah, he's got a little uh, little perch oh, cool. in there. Fishing with sonar or a depth sounder is a very practical way to get the edge on finding fish. After all, if you don't know where they are, you may be drowning flies in an area completely devoid of fish. There are a wide variety of depth sounders or fish finders manufactured, and they range from very elaborate to simple handheld units that are very portable. In very simple terms, all sonar units send out a beam, which is bounced back to the sonar unit, and the time it takes to bounce back is calculated to determine the distance or depth of the fish or bottom structure. <laughs> I just found the spot, Brian. I let, let the fly sink. Um, st uh, the line was almost vertical before I started retrieving. It, that almost looks like a little ling. I saw him. I think it's one of the. It's another. Uh, I saw him come up and take the fly. <laughs> this water's so clear out here. I um, <laughs> I can't quite grab him yet because my fly will be right on the bottom. So I'll, I'll grab be... him. I can get him. I'll get him from here. You can lift these guys, right? You can. You can lift them. They're a uh, little abrasive, but uh, squeeze hard with your thumb, and that there way they're go. not going to spin around too much on your thumb. Get that. Boy, did I need So for a silver, silver gray rockfish, that's a good size oh, yeah. and uh, plenty of Perfect. fight. I'll let him go. Look, straight back down. <laughs> With Jay Mole, the owner and head guide of Clackwatt Ventures out of Tofino, British Columbia. We're going to spend the day fishing on the water today in beautiful Clackwatt Sound. So Jay, why don't you tell us about the different lines we're going to need today for a variety of different species, whether they're bottom fish or Pacific salmon. Well, what's uh, pretty typical, Brian, is uh, when we're fishing for a diversity of fish, which we're really fortunate to have in this area, a lot of different types of structure, a lot of different um, areas with uh, sandbars, kelp beds, rock piles, uh, tidal flow influencing the bait fish that congregates in those areas. Right. Yeah. Um, being equipped with different types of heads, uh, whether it's a shooting head or a interchangeable sink tip, yep. um, normally between a 200 grain to a 600 grain line is ample. Uh, in the mid range of three to 400 is very common. Uh, so we are getting subsurface for sure. Um, often we're fishing in 15 to 30 feet of water, uh, focusing on fish, different species in that range and uh, having a uh, pattern like a clouser or a deep clouser that is weighted as well. Yep, Something like you've got eyes. rigged yep. up with dumbbell eyes. Yep. We're gonna be using that to focus on uh, probably bottom fish species like um, silver gray rockfish, uh, kelp greenling, lingcod, uh, copper and quillback rockfish. And in those same areas, the coho salmon are pushing the bait fish into those kelp beds and feeding, so that could be a real bonus for us. Perfect. So the variety of, of different weights or grains of lines that we need, uh, we have to, it comes into play because we're fishing current and we have to be able to get through that, get down. We're, we're fishing current and we need to get um, subsurface and usually fairly fast. When you lay a cast out, it does not have to be a far cast, but when you lay you your are, cast out, you want it to get, get down, down into the zone and then um, pull up and then pull up through it. Yep. And uh, so therefore we, uh, we want to be fishing a fairly fast action rod, normally an eight or nine weight for yep. heavier tips, like I mentioned. So, so for the traveling angler, uh, a multi-tip system with a running, running line and then interchangeable loop to loops is the perfect the loop-to-loop -loop system is very good and being equipped with a variety of tips ready to go and uh, usually a butt of 25 uh, down to 2015 and then uh, with our salmon we usually go down to around 12 tip it and with the bottom fish sticking with 20 because they're quite uh, toothy critters so yeah. yeah sounds good let's go get some yeah.
I was almost all the way to the surface when this guy hit. You could see him coming up. They get sideways down there. Imagine if you had current out, strong current, they'd really pull. That's a nice fish though. I can see back at the uh, at the kelp bed where they were stacked up. I just saw them boiling at oh, the edge right? of the kelp. Oh, that's that's, uh, that's a good. They don't get a lot bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a beautiful that's a really fish. Really healthy big black bass. We'll let him go. Nice. So what I did on this cast was the wind is drifting us this way and I think the current's going this way too. So I cast up wind and uh, let the let this tungsten uh, shooting head sink down real deep, get down as deep as I could because on the sounder we're in 43 feet of water. And the fly line was almost vertical before I started to retrieve. Oh, nice. Uh, Good sized black bass. Well, that's a good size one, yeah. Wait, did he run? He took a good run. So. I thoroughly enjoyed my day with Jay Mole. He's not only an expert at what he does, but also just a great guy to spend a day on the water with. I hope you enjoyed today's show and make the Tofino area one of your future trips. For more information on this show and others in our series, Visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis, Ontario, yours to discover, Islander Precision Fly Reels,